In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to give you some tips on using the AI Style Pack. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence, and what it does is it gives you a whole host of styling effects that you can apply to any video in your project. We'd like to give you a short example of what that looks like. We're going to take the video you see on the screen, transition to the style pack version of it, and then back to normal again. So after these few seconds of this clip, we'll get back and show you how to do that. To get to the AI Style Pack, you move to the menu at the top and click on the word Plugins. And then from the drop down menu, simply select AI Style Plugin. That will open up your Style Plugin window. Now, in my Style Plugin, I have several packages that I've already downloaded. The first one here gives me 10 subcategories of style. I click on the Vincent van Gogh. I have another 10. If I click on the Impressionist, I don't have any. I'd like to show you how to download if you don't have any. Now, the AI Style Pack applies to CyberLink PowerDirector version 16 and beyond. If you have PowerDirector 365, you automatically have access to these packages for free. Now, the window here, because I haven't downloaded this Impressionist version, comes in two sections. The first section is the big graphic with the play arrow in the middle. If I click on that, it will take me to the website. The other option is to simply download. Let's do the first option now and click here, and it will take me to CyberLink's website. What it does is it shows me the package, tells me what it is, it tells me what version it applies to, and what I need on my computer to run it effectively. Then it gives me examples. Now you know each of these is a segment of three. It gives you an original picture, it gives you one of the sub-styles that you can pick from that package, and it gives you an image of what it looks like when it's completed. And so you have each of the sub-styles reflected in this little promo page here. And then you can try it for free or you can buy it if you're not a subscriber. That's what you see when you go to this page. We're going to close that out for now. Since I'm a subscriber, I'm going to click on the Download Now button. Let's see what happens then. That immediately closes my copy of PowerDirector and opens up the Application Manager. I need to go to my Effect Pack and then go through the list and look for the Style Pack that I'm looking for that I don't have already. I notice because of the blue circle around install, I don't have the AI Style Pack Volume 2. Now if I were to click on this little eye icon, it would take me to the same page I just saw a few moments ago. But I'm going to click on install, and it will force me to accept the EULA. I'll do that, and then it will begin the download and install process. Once it finishes downloading, it won't take very long at all to install the new AI style pack that I have here. And when you're done and you have the word install in dark print, you can simply close the application manager and then reopen your copy of PowerDirector. Now I'm going to move back into the plugin by clicking on the plugin again and choosing the AI style from the drop down. And now let's click on the Impressionist subcategory. And now I see that I've downloaded 10 variations of Impressionist that I can use. So that's how you begin to populate your AI style package. Let's actually work on one of these right now. I'm going to pick one that we did in our example, the Vincent van Gogh. And the first thing you do is you select one of the sub-styles that you want from that package. I'm going to take the wheat field 
and click on that and it will pop it open on my preview screen on the right side. Again, these are all slightly maneuverable. Once I have the screen here, I need to select my source video. So I'm going to click on Import Video. And I can do from the drive or the media room. Mine's in the media room already. So I'll just click on that and click on OK. And it will put the video in the preview panel in the upper right. Now you notice what it did was it applied the style of that particular kind of clip from Van Gogh to this particular picture. Now I probably don't want their skin to be bluish purple. So what I need to do is click on the box in the lower left that says keep original color. If I do that, it will recalculate and now it will keep it the original color, but it will apply the stylistic effects of that particular AI style. Now if I play it, it's actually going to play the original video because it only impacts one frame at a time. I can move to any frame I want to inside the video and it will pause and it will immediately render that frame like it would be if it were applied to the entire clip. So I have to examine one frame at a time to see is this going to work the way I want. Now, one of the other things I can do is I can set an in and out point. If I don't want the entire clip to be modified this way, I can move in as far as I want. And I would encourage you to note where your in and out points are. If I want a, a simple one, I can just type in the number there. Set it for 13 seconds in. And set an out point. And here I'll set an out point at 22 seconds by typing the number in. And so I have a very specific length of clip I'm applying here. And then when you're done, you click on the Transform Video. It will give you a time remaining. Now I have to warn you that this will take a long time because it goes frame by frame and it applies the transformation to the video. Initial time remaining will not necessarily be what you see reflected in the clock above. It will vary according to your computer and how it happens to process these commands. Let me give you an example. I produced the one that you saw a few moments ago that was approximately 21 seconds long. That took 16 and one half minutes. But that's the process. And when you're done transforming, what it will do is it will take that modified video and place it in your media room. Then you can treat it like any other video you have and edit it, use transitions into and out of it, um, modify it in PowerDirector any way you want. I'd recommend using this tool sparingly and on very short clips unless you want to spend lots of time drinking coffee and waiting for the rendering to occur. It's a nice powerful tool for a very cool effect but it's not one you'll want on the screen for a long time in most cases.